Thank you for tuning in to Hill Country Fellowship's audio podcast. We hope you're encouraged and inspired as you listen today. Today, we're talking about being in the world, but not of the world. In the world, but not of the world. And uh, the, the best illustration I could think of for this is Buddy the Elf. Um, I know it's, it's way too early. For, uh, I actually asked in the, the office this week if it was too early for a Christmas movie illustration. And uh, Crystal said, no, it's not too early. I'm already listening to my Christmas albums right now. So um, she, I'm sure she's not the only one in here, but just bear with me if it's too early. Uh, it is starting to feel a little bit that way. You know, it's down in the 90s. And um, I, I, bought some, I bought some Snow Angel hand soap at HEB the other day. So it's starting to, to get that way. But uh, Buddy the Elf, you know the, the character, right? He was mistake, he's a human who was mistakenly taken to the North Pole. And he was raised by Santa and the elves, raised as an elf. And um, later in his life, he goes to New York City to find his dad. And he takes all of his elfness with him. And it makes for a great uh, time, lots of different funny scenes and everything. There's one scene where his, uh, his little brother that he finds, he's walking him home from school, and uh, they start, they get uh, ambushed by the bullies uh, throwing snowballs at them. And Buddy the Elf is like, what are we doing? We can take these guys. And in just like a couple seconds, he makes like a hundred snowballs and, and uh, hits everybody and, and wins the snowball fight. He's like a pro snowball guy because of um, being an elf from the North Pole. That's where he's from. But, uh, and his brother at the end of that scene, he looks at him and he's like, where did you say you're from again? Uh, because uh, one of the, the main points I want to hone in on there is, is where we're from shapes what you do. Where you're from shapes what you do and, and who you are, even. Um, the, it's the, the common phrase you probably heard, or, or you can complete this phrase for me. You can take the boy out of the country, but you can't take the country out of the boy, right? Or any version of that phrase that you've heard or used. Um, now, I do want to say this is, this is not really just in the, the physical sense. Uh, we can rise above our circumstances, where we're born. I mean, the American dream, where we live, right? You can rise above what you're born into. But I'm, I'm talking especially, and we'll see, in a spiritual sense. But it's, it's true that where we're from is going to shape what we do and who we are. So in, the, in this tough series, looking at the phrase, in the world, but not of the world, um, it's talking about where we're from. And, and it, uh, that phrase is actually not, not explicitly in Scripture, uh, but it definitely comes from John chapter 17, if you want to turn there, is where we're going to be today. Um, John chapter 17 is, is where Jesus is praying right before he's going to be betrayed, arrested, and crucified, and he's praying to the Father. We get a front row seat into Jesus' relationship with the Father. Um, so, some might call this the Lord's Prayer more properly, even um, not what he taught us to pray, but, but his actual prayer with the Father. So I'm going to read uh, John chapter 17, starting in verse 11 this morning. I'm reading out of the CSB. Jesus is praying. I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I was protecting them by your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them is lost, except the son of destruction, so that the scripture may be fulfilled. Now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world so that they may have my joy completed in them. I have given them your word. The world hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I am not praying that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. I sanctify myself for them so that they also may be sanctified by the truth. So when we think of being in the world, not of the world, you hear, hear those phrases in there, right? We typically think of it as the Christian life is, is this list of all the things we can do and the things that we can't do. That's being in the world, not of the world. But what we see in Jesus' prayer here is it's really talking about our identity, our identity of not being in the world. 
And what is he talking about when he talks about the world there? It's, it's kind of an intuitive thing, but I, I um, in studying this week, went to um, all of the times that it talks about the world in the New Testament. I took a little survey, and I want to share some of that with y'all today. Um, it's used a lot. It's a really broad word that means quite a few different things, but, but here it's definitely talking about a negative view of the world, of, of the unbelievers and their kind of mentality, their mindset, and their choices in the world. Um, and so here's some of the negative views of the world throughout Scripture. I'm just going to kind of rapid fire these. If, if you want to list, uh, let me know. But he says, what does it benefit someone if he gains the whole world and yet loses or forfeits himself? The world cannot hate you, but it does hate me because I testify about it that its works are evil. You were dead in your trespasses and sins in which you previously walked according to the ways of this world, according to our fleshly desires. We were by nature children of wrath. Friendship with the world is hostility toward God. So whoever wants to be the friend of the world becomes the enemy of God. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of one's possessions is not from the Father, but is from the world. The world with its lust is passing away, but the one who does the will of God remains forever. There's definitely this negative view of the world in Scripture. And so Jesus is showing here that his identity is not of the world, and our identity is not of the world of the world. And when I thought of that phrase before, not of the world, um, I would typically think of that, uh, the, the NLT actually translates it as like doesn't belong to the world. That's kind of the sense that I thought of. But in studying this, the, the preposition there is it's talking about like the source or out of or like from. We are not out of the world. Jesus is not out of the world. He did not come from the world, but he came from above. It's talking about the source or the origin and this goes back to towards the beginning of John. Jesus is talking to Nicodemus, right? And he says, you must be born again or born from above is what that's saying. We need a, a different origin. And that's what Jesus gives us through faith in him, a new origin story. Everybody loves a good origin story, right? It's typically in like superhero or, uh, or the, the villains. They have a good origin that make, helps you to understand where they come from, or especially the villains. It's like what, what makes them make the decisions and, and be the bad guy. Um, It's the origin story. We are given a new origin, a new starting point because of Jesus. Because where you're from shapes what you do. Our lives should look different because of Jesus. Because he's given us a new starting point. When, When someone asks... Um, what's different about you? We shouldn't be able to explain that even without being able to talk about Jesus as our new origin story as believers. And so we have this new identity and and new desires because of Jesus. But, I mean, we we still live in the world and we still wrestle with the, the flesh in us and the worldly desires. And so Jesus prays in verse 17 that we would be sanctified. Sanctify is kind of a churchy word, right? He's talking about being, being set apart. It's the same word as holy. Um, and earlier in the prayer, he prays to the Holy Father. God is sanctified. He's set apart from the world. There's something so different um, from him, from the world. And he prays that that would be the same for us, that we would be different from the world. And so continuing my, my survey of the, the New Testament verses that talk about the world, it's also all over the New Testament where um, we are called to be different than the world. Here's some of those verses. The world has been crucified to me through the cross and I to the world. So that you may be blameless and pure children of God who are faultless in a crooked and perverted generation among whom you shine like stars in the world. If you died with Christ to the elements of this world, why do you live as if you still belonged to the world? If you've been raised with Christ, seek the things above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. Pure and undefiled religion before God the Father is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself unstained from the world. Through God's great and precious promises, you may share in the divine nature, escaping the corruption that is in the world. Because everyone who has been born of God conquers the world, this is the victory that has conquered the world, our faith. 
And actually studying for this, the, the verse that I thought was going to be in that list was Romans 12 too, right? Don't be conformed to the pattern of this world. Uh, but that actually, it uses a different word. It's, it's don't be conformed to this age is really what it's saying. Kind of a different word, but a synonym there. The point is we're supposed to be, we're called to be different. We're supposed to look different, be sanctified, set apart from the world. And so if we stop there, it, it feels like the calling of a Christian is, is just to, to seclude ourselves and become isolationists and just remove ourselves from the world. But Jesus doesn't stop there, right? He gives us uh, a new identity of, of not being of the world, but he also gives us a mission of being sent into the world. Because, to finish my survey of the New Testament here, there's still more of the world in the New Testament where God shows his heart for the world. I want to share those with you. God's heart for the world. This good news of the kingdom will be proclaimed in all the world as a testimony to all nations. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. God so loved the world that he gave his only son. God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. The bread of God is the one who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. I have come as light into the world so that everyone who believes in me would not remain in darkness. If anyone hears my words and doesn't keep them, I do not judge him, for I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. In Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them. He himself is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only for ours, but also for those of the whole world. And we have seen and we testify that the Father has sent his Son as the world's Savior. So God's still in the midst of how bad the world is, and we're supposed to be set apart from it. God has this heart for the world to be saved. Um, If if y'all remember the song, probably about 10 years ago even, the song called Where I Belong. It says, all I know is I'm not home yet. This is not where I belong. Take this world and give me Jesus. This is not where I belong. It's an encouraging song thinking of that identity. In in a sense, it's true that that we have a different home because of what God has called us into. But at the same time, it it gives the wrong impression in some ways because we do belong in the world. Jesus said, just as the Father sent him into the world, he sends us into the world. As long as you're living and breathing, you belong here for a purpose. You have a mission that God has sent you on because of his heart for the world. When you believe in Jesus, he doesn't just zap you up into heaven. You are still here for a reason, for a purpose. So it's kind of this, this irony of what Jesus prays for us here in this phrase, in the world, not of the world. Like we, we have a new identity and we're called to be separate from the world, but at the same time we are sent into the world. And that, that is difficult, right? Um, the, the running analogy in Scripture that it gives us for, for picturing this is being an ambassador. In 2 Corinthians 5, verse 20, Paul says, We are ambassadors for Christ um, since God is making his appeal through us. We plead on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. What is an ambassador? Ambassador is, is someone that represents their home country. They go to a foreign country to represent them and their, their interests and their desires, right? Well, an ambassador, when they're in that foreign country, they're going to be surrounded by a whole different world of, of a different culture, different customs, different language and food. And they, they might take on some of those things as needed for the mission. They might dress a certain way to show respect. But whenever the day is done and they're back home, um, they're not going to be dressing like that culture around them. They're going to maintain where they came from, right? They're not going to, they might learn the language and use it um, as necessary, but their, their thoughts and their dreams are still going to be in their native language. It, it's like us, if, if you've been on an international mission trip, um, I've experienced this where, especially if it's, if it's to a totally different culture, you're surrounded by a different culture. It might be interesting to learn about some of those things, but at the end of the day, you're not really going to be tempted to like adopt some of those things long term for your entire life. You're still going to be um, where you came from, right? Um, that's how we should be as ambassadors for Christ, even here at home all the time. We, we're surrounded by a culture around us, but those things should not tempt to to become our main identity because we have a different source, a different origin now because of Jesus. We have a, just like the ambassador, we have a firm commitment to the mission that we are sent on. 
So it is, it's maintaining this holiness and being set apart, the identity that Jesus has given us, and being sent into the world and engaging the world around us at the same time, which Jesus is the perfect picture of, right? He is the, the one who is perfectly holy and perfectly set apart and, and perfectly different from the world while also not secluding himself from the world, but going into the world, perfectly engaging them without being stained by them. That's what, what Jesus was, and the challenge is, does my life look like that? Um, do, do I make those kind of decisions? Is there something different about me in the world? So as we uh, apply this to our lives, what does it look like to live in the world, but not of the world, to live as an ambassador for Jesus? It's, it's a balancing act. Um, we need to avoid two extremes with, with this identity we talked about and the mission that we talked about that Jesus gives us. There's two extremes or like reversals that Christians tend to make. We, on the, the one side, our identity should be um, not of the world um, and our mission should be being sent into the world. M- cr- some Christians, really in America, I think this is the biggest problem, is we are so in the world that we turn that into our identity of being in the world. So where there's, there's, we look so much like the world that there's nothing different about us. It's like, uh, like being a thermometer. I brought this here today. What does a thermometer do? Right? It, it measures exactly whatever is around it. Whatever it's in, it's going to tell you what that is. That's what so many of us Christians look like today. I'm super familiar with this because of the start of school season and everything. It's, you know, everybody gets sick. But, um, it, it looks exactly like everything around it. That's how so many of us Christians look exactly like the world around us. When really, we should be, what is this here? It's kind of a fancy touchscreen one, but it's a thermostat. We should be a thermostat, right? Not a thermometer. A thermostat, you, you turn the settings and it's going to determine what the uh, surroundings are, are going to turn into. As Christians engaging the world, that's what we should be doing. We should be affecting the world around us as we engage with it. Now, that's, that's one of the problems, turning our identity into the world instead of our identity being not of the world. Well, on the other hand, Christians, we, uh, a lot of us can also get so wrapped in our identity not being of the world that we turn our mission into not being of the world to where that's our entire focus. We become like a thermostat, like this one literally is unplugged, right? It's not gonna make any difference because it's not plugged into where it's supposed to be for the mission. Sorry, Bill, it might be a little hot back there. I did unplug this today, but um, <laughs> I'll plug it in as soon as we're done. But that's how many, so, so many of us Christians are, is, is being unplugged from the world and not making any kind of impact in what we're called to do. So we should be a thermostat, not a thermometer, and we should be plugged in. We have to remember that we are sent into the world. So I'm going to go over some practical examples of what this looks like. And some of these might be some, some touchy subjects. As long as it's something that's not like specifically called for in Scripture, we need to have grace with each other when we talk about these things. But it's important to talk about these things. So the first one I thought of is, is with music, okay? And each of these, we need to start from that starting point of our identity, okay? So I, my identity is not of the world. I have a different origin, a new source of where I come from. My deepest desire for music should be music that glorifies God and, and draws me closer to Him. And I know that Christian music sometimes gets a bad rap for being cheesy or, or poorly done a lot of times, but there really are a lot of amazing Christian musicians out there. Um, I don't know if y'all are aware, but we have an awesome worship team. I, I just want to give a shout out to Josh and Andrew and uh, the media team as well, the, the tech, everything that goes into that. They work so hard. There's an amazing, talented musicians that do that. And I know in a church this size, there's more. If, if you are a musician, talk to Josh and, and get plugged in on that team for sure. I'm sure he would love to get you plugged in. But as a believer, if you're a believer and you never listen to music that talks about God and, and spiritual themes. Um, ask God to give you those desires. It shouldn't be awkward to hear those kinds of songs. That should resonate deep in our soul and the deepest identity that we have. That's our identity. At the same time, we are sent into the world, right? I can, I can listen to secular songs and appreciate a fellow human and, and their work of art and, and how that connects with me as a fellow human, as long as it's not, uh, you know, like gratifying my, my fleshly desires, right? As, as an ambassador, I can even use those secular songs um, to connect and build bridges with people into gospel conversations as they talk about the human experience, 
Parents, as a side note, your kids, they, they know Taylor Swift. As, as much as you love um, Casting Crowns or Chris Tomlin, when they are alone, they're gonna be listening to um, Billie Eilish. I'm not super familiar with her, but that's one I know is popular today. Or, or Post Malone or Luke Combs, right? Um, if they had any taste, it'd be George Strait and Cody Johnson, though. Am I right? Right? Okay, okay, I figured that would get some. Um, but you're not gonna shelter them from the worldly music forever. We, we can and we should protect them from the influence of the world, but as they grow and as is age appropriate, we need to be preparing them for the world as well. And, and so for a lot of these things I'm gonna talk about, parents, I would encourage you to, to take opportunities to have teaching moments with your kids. When there's something of the world and, and a worldly influence, pull them aside and, and talk to them about why that is or, or what exactly was being expressed there and why we as Christians are different and we do things differently. And so it's the same with, with anything that we consume, TV shows, movies, or books, or video games, or even the, the hobbies that we take part in. I, a new identity, I am not of the world. I have a different source, a different origin. And so those things are not what I live for ultimately. I can find, find pleasure in those and, and, and gratitude towards God, and I can enjoy those things as long as they are, they are in uh, view of my mission as an ambassador. They're serving those purposes. Another topic would be our choice of school. Uh, I know this can be a, a really touchy one, right? But, uh, okay, so my identity. I am not of the world. I have a new source, a new origin, where I'm from. So, so public school can be great, but I can't delegate my entire kid's education to other people. Or even here in the church, like Sunday school or the youth group on Wednesdays, um, someone else cannot replace what God has called me to do with my family and raising my kids and discipling my kids. And part of that is, is protecting my kids from the influence of the world, right? At the same time, my mission, I'm sent into the world. Private or, or homeschooling can be great, but I, I can't use that purely as a means of just sheltering my kids from the world. At some point, somewhere along the way, I have to prepare my kids and expose them to the mission, the, the world. Because if they're believers, that's their mission as well. They need uh, preparation for the world to engage it. So it, it's great to discuss these things, especially that topic with other families and community, but let's not judge each other for, for where someone might land on that and the best decision for their family. Another big topic, I'm stepping on toes today probably, politics, right? Okay, my, my identity, I am not of the world. I have a new origin, a new starting point where I'm from. My primary citizenship is in heaven. My ultimate trust is in Jesus and his kingdom. It can never be in a single politician or political platform or even a single country, as great as ours may be. My prayer should always be, Father, let your kingdom come, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. At the same time, I have a mission. I'm sent into the world. God has entrusted me in the place where I'm at with a voice and a vote. And, and I'm called to, to use that vote to the best as I can to um, support candidates and positions that are gonna make the world look more like God's kingdom. Um, and dare I say, even getting involved in public office. I'm so thankful for you Christians that are uh, in public service right now. Thank God for you. So um, I, I would like to plug here um, two of the tables that we have at the back. One of them is voter registration. If you're not registered to vote, um, we would love to help make that happen and, and become an informed, informed is a, a key there, and biblically-minded, kingdom-minded voter. Go get registered to vote. Um, also related to that, we have a new class coming up on uh, Tuesday evenings in just a couple weeks. It's called Biblical Citizenship. That's talking all about that, how to be an informed uh, voter and citizen. And uh, uh, so check out the table at the back for that, for Biblical Citizenship. Um, okay, another, another topic would be social media. Okay, my identity, I'm not of this world. I, my need for affirmation and, and validation is totally secured and fulfilled in Jesus and what my Father says about me. I don't have to fall for the trap of posting about myself just for the need of other people's likes and to feel better about myself. But at the same time, I have a mission. I'm sent into the world, and the world in a lot of ways lives online. I can use those platforms to try to make a good impact and spread the love of Jesus. Money. 
I'm not of the world, right? I have a new identity, so I don't, I don't have to, to chase money for my security or my, my pleasure in, in buying all the, the things. I trust God that he is gonna take care of me and my needs and my future is in his hands. At the same time, I'm sent into the world. I have a mission. God blesses me with the ability to work and make a living and plan for the future. When he blesses me beyond what I need, I, I, can, I can be generous and I can, I can buy things and enjoy them again as long as those things aren't my ultimate enjoyment and I, I'm using them in my mission as an ambassador for Jesus. So another plug here, another class we happen to be having. Uh, starting this Wednesday is Financial Peace University. There's another table at the back to check that out. Uh, John and Lauren are gonna do an awesome job leading through that. It's all about biblical principles for, for handling your money and, and especially getting financially free to be able to do the things that God calls you to do. Y'all check out that table in the back. A couple other things. It's the same with, with food even, right? We don't talk about gluttony very often, but I have, I have a new identity. I, my satisfaction is in God, so I don't have to, to um, just engorge myself with, with food and taste to satisfy myself. That comes from God. But at the same time, I'm sent into the world. I have a physical body. I have needs. I have taste buds. I can enjoy those things as long as they don't control me, and I, and I use that in my connection with others as an ambassador for Jesus. Same with fashion, Okay, I'm not of the world. Um, I, I, I'm defined by what biblically God calls me to do in, in modesty, um, but at the same time, I'm sent into the world, and I can express myself through fashion. Um, that's definitely not my cup of tea. You're probably, probably obvious with that, but it's okay to express yourself and, and enjoy um, choosing what you choose to put on, as long as it's not drawing attention to yourself to satisfy yourself, but to express yourself and connect with other people about that. That's a great way to use it. Okay, all these things are difficult, though, Right? Our big idea for this entire series is that it'll cost you. It'll cost you. We might receive hatred from the world or deal with rejection of other people or, or maybe even feeling lonely in some ways. Matthew seven fourteen, Jesus said, How narrow is the gate and difficult the road that leads to life, and few find it. This path of Jesus comes with a price. It might be awkward when you have to remove yourself from a conversation that's turned to gossip, or it might be awkward when you have to remove yourself or, or turn off the show whenever it's, it's something that's targeting your sinful desires, which is so much of the media that we have, right? It might be, lead to difficult conversations with family, which is what Jesus promised. He said he's bringing not, a, not peace, but a sword, and families are gonna turn, um, be split up over this Jesus issue. He gives us three things, I think, are, are the three key things to, to deal with this difficult road he's called us to. Number one is, is a new family. Okay, if you keep reading in Jesus' prayer here, verse 20 and 21, he says, I pray not only for these, but also for those who would believe in me through their word. He pr his prayer is for us even today. May they all be one as you, Father, are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us so that the world may believe you sent me. We're not, we're not like a solo ambassador that's on a solo mission. God has called us into a new family to, to do this together. The whole mission he sent us on it hinges on us being united, being one. So my question for you is, who is your inner circle? Who are those, those key people in your life that are, are speaking into your life? Are those people of the world or people that have the new identity from Jesus that are gonna point you to him? That's why we encourage you so much to get plugged into a life group. Let that life group, let those people be your main inner circle who are speaking into your life and pointing you in the Jesus direction. Amen. Second thing, he gives us the Holy Spirit in us, right? The Holy Spirit empowers us to live this life. First John 4, 4, he said, the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. All of those worldly temptations we have, the one who is in me is greater than all of those things. Remember that this, this is... This is an identity thing, being, of, being not of the world. It's a new identity. It's not just a, a list of do's and don'ts to try harder. Where you're from shapes what you do. Okay, the last one is he gives us the word of God. He prays that we would be sanctified and set apart, and he says, sanctify them by the truth, and your word is truth. The key to being set apart from the world while we're sent into the world is the word of God. The more we're grounded in God's word, the more our desires will grow and be in line with him and his will, be in line with that identity that he's given us. Our flesh, our worldly desires, they won't be as tempting the more we're plugged into God's word. Right. 
So all of this is difficult, but there is, there is hope. There's light at the end of the tunnel. We have this balance of, of like our spiritual identity being different than the, the world that we're living in. But we look forward to, like in Revelation um, eleven fifteen, the final return of Jesus. It says the kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and Christ, and he will reign forever and ever. We're looking forward to a time when those two will be one and the same. My, my physical worldly existence is going to be uh, matched with my spiritual reality and identity. It won't be a struggle so long um, for the end. So there's hope in that. So as we conclude today, remember where you're from shapes what you do. We, we are not from here anymore. We have a different origin story. We need to live out of that. But maybe for some of you in here today, that's not true of you. You have been living in the world and, and you have not received that new birth from Jesus from above. We, as Christians, it might look like we are, are just um, living a, a list of, of things that we are supposed to do and don't do and that it just makes us weird. But that's not really what's going on because we've been given a new identity and, and God has shaped our new desires for things of him. We realize that the things of the world won't truly satisfy us. And we've found our true fulfillment in Jesus. And I encourage you to do the same. You've lived long enough to know that the world is not going to truly satisfy you. Try Jesus. He will truly satisfy your soul. Let's pray. God, I thank you so much that that you have given us a new birth, a new identity, a new reality. God, I pray that we can live out of that. God, you've given us a, a new identity and call us into a new mission. And I, I pray that we wouldn't just isolate ourselves from the world, but we would live that out and, and make an impact on the world around us for you, Jesus. God, I, I thank you that, that you came and did it yourself. You didn't, you didn't stay secluded, but you came and made an impact. Jesus. We can never thank you enough for that. May we uh, just live into that more and more. God, I pray that we would live into the Holy Spirit in us, empowering us to do those things. God, I thank you so much for, for saving us and calling us out of this world. I pray for anyone in this room that has not turned to you, Jesus. Today would be the day that they are given a new birth, a new identity from above, God, as they come to faith in you. God, we worship you now in Jesus' name. Amen. For more messages and full services, visit hcfburnit.org or the Church Center app and connect with us on social media. 